uh, spontaneously with certain <coughs> some sweet memories between between Sri Guru Maharaj also your Hari Nama Guru Mad Bhakti Bhai Bhakpuri Goswami Maharaj. No, <coughs> in Okay, in the beginning, in the very beginning of Sri Chaitanya Sarasat Maut in Navadip, when what happened? It's making really weird sound and it's disturbing. Hmm. So, in the beginning days, of Sri Chaitanya Sarasat Maut in Navadip, they, they started, began staying together very happily and so, you know, Sri Guru Maharaj, Bhakti Rakshak Siddhar Deva Goswami Pad and Srimad Bhakti Vaibhav Puri Goswami Pad also another uh, Acharya, he was at that time known as Vipad, Vipad <coughs> Bhutavidras Brahmachari. And my Shiksha Guru Maharaj, your Gurudev, Smad Bhakti Vayubhav Purivashai Maharaj, was known during those times as Nishinghananda. Srimad Nishinghananda Brahmachari. Mm -hmm. So, in the in the beginning beginning period of the Chaitanya Sarsatmat Navadhi, both the exalted God brothers stayed together for a long time and sharing and caring for each other. Mm -hmm. Even you can see. One of the memories, one of the sweet memories found how the, both the God brothers were so nicely, lovingly related to each other. You know, at some point, the Guru Maharaj, Bhakti Rakshak Siddhar Dev Goswami Maharaj, so he began writing, compiling, come writing that book, the Prapanna Jivanamritam, you know, the light nectar of the surrendered souls. So he actually began writing that book, composing that book from his Hachet Bhajana Kutir, Mud Hut, in Sichaitanya Sarasatamata. But he just, he just got the land, the beautiful land there, Asrama land. And then he built up a Madhat Bhajan Kutir there. And by living in that Bhajan Kutir, during his, during his lifetime, all the bhajana activities in that bhajana kuti, very plain, simple way. So he used to be engaged in composing that beautiful book, Prapanna Jivanamrita, also lovingly engaged, engaged in worshipping Girirajo, Giriraj Govardhan with so much love and devotion. Many of the local people are already admirers, devotees of Guru Maharaj, coming in, coming in contact of him, coming in <coughs> holy association. Many of the local people there around that ashrama at that time naturally became so devoted to Guru Maharaj. So in the beginning, the Guru Maharaj had to go out for 
भिक्षा और दूसरे कलेक्टिंग आर्म्स इन द वेरी बिगिनिंग ही जस्ट ही वुड बी गोइंग अराउंड टू डू सम भिक्षा टू कलेक्ट सम राइस डाल फ्रूट सब्जी फ्रॉम सर्टन रेसिडेंस इज देयर होम ही कंसीडर दे लिविंग अ गुड लाइफ सम लोकल लोकल रेसिडेंस हाउसेस बी कलेक्टिंग आर्म्स एवरी डे ब्रिंग इट एंड देन प्रिपेयर भोग फॉर द गिरिराज एवरी डे वी कुकिंग भोग फॉर गिरिराज ऑफरिंग भोग टू गिरिराज आफ्टर ऑल डी वर्सिपिंग एंड देन टेकिंग प्रसाद regularly twice a day sometimes just once a day we'll be taking prasad remain fulfilled satisfied so it was it was his main bhajanandi activity during that time hmm. the cooking bhog preparing bhog for the giriraj offering to the giriraj Govardhan ji, and then engaging in worshiping Giri Raja, also engaging in writing that book, composing that book, Prapanna Jivanamrita. Then, in course of time, in a slow but steady way, Chaitanya Shashatmat started developing more qualified devotees became. related they received connection with guru maharaj as some some of the local devotees uh, became spiritually connected with guru maharaj they all started helping him so thus chaitanya sharshat mat started developing from that point Hmm. And then at some point, he was bhakti boy of Puri Goswami Maharaj. Now another, he was still. Both of them were Brahmacharis, who was disciple. And our Param Guru Dev Sir Bhakti Shiddhant Sir Shri Thakur Prabhu was disciple there, but still in the Brahmachari ashram. He was <coughs> bhakti boy of Puri Goswami Thakur, known as. Uh, the Nishingananda Das Brahmachari, that was known as Bhutavid Das Brahmachari. After taking sannyas, the other Brahmacharis, disciple of Sarshadi Thakur, was known as Bhakti Saudha Ashram Maharaj. So, <clears throat> and how I felt inspired, okay, for for the specific reason. I just felt inspired to describe about Sri Guru Maharaj's uh, the first book, his, his composition of his first book, Prabodhna Jivanamrita, is also as directly in relation to Sri Guru Maharaj's first memory, one of the first beautiful memories, writing books, and engaging in devotional engaging in service of Guru Raj. Also, after that book got completed, after Sri Guru Maharaj completed that book, Prapanna Jivanamrita, then it was <coughs> it was published by Mad Bhakti Boy of Puri Goswami Maharaj, known at that time the, as Nishingananda the Brahmachari. His name also mentioned. In the first prelude, you know, in the prelude of the first Prapanna Jivanamrita Granth published in Bengali, so he was directly involved. Okay. So he was, he got, he got directly involved, directly engaged in, in promoting that beautiful book. Okay. This is Prapanna Jivanamrita. he wrote a very nice introduction 
in the first book of Guru Maharaj in Bengali. You know. mm. And very nice. Okay. So, but it has been one of the very sweet memories, sweet spiritual memories of both the God brothers. Mm. So, you can still find in the, in the English version the first introduction written by Samad Bhakti Vaibhav Puri Goswami Maharaj. Was at that time was then he was known as he called Mishingan on the Brahmacharya. Okay, introduction is still there translated in the Prapunna, English edition of Prapunna Jivanabhas. Yes. But... He wrote the introduction first. He wrote a prelude to that. And prelude come introduction. Mm. You can still find the English translation. Uh, that book. He has got that. See, he knows about. Maybe you can help him. But you can find it. Find it out. Mm. You can help. Send. Send a copy. Mm. He wrote a beautiful introduction to that beautiful book. So significant, so educative. Upon the nature of the book, Prapunna Jivanamritam, Life Nectar of the Surrendered, is that it is, is a combination of Siddhanta and higher devotional taste. I repeat, book is the combination, composition of some very nice uh, high class Siddhantas and also devotion, <clears throat> higher devotional taste. Mm. But that book was mainly focused on Sharanagati. Six limbs of Sharanagati. Since Sharana, without Sharanagati, we cannot make any progress, we cannot be developing at all in our devotional life, higher devotional life. Therefore, the whole book, the whole motto, of that book, whole purpose of that book is to be is to be giving illuminations on Sharanagati, or loving surrender, loving dedication to the divine couple, Mahaprabhu. So that one of the I mean, most wonderful, mm, wonderful, important books to help promoting Sharanagati. And that's how it is named, the title is also named Prapanna Jivanabhitam. That's the very specific title the Guru Maharaj chose for that book. He mainly, mainly compiled all different, you know, different uh, special verses from the Holy Scriptures. In other words, he collected many uh, specific verses from the Holy Scriptures which were dedicated to the developing and promoting Sharanagati. Got them together. But Guru Maharaj's main contribution was he wrote commentary. He wrote precise commentaries on all those you know, wonderful verses from the Holy Scriptures in connection with Saranagati, uh, loving devotion, how to be developing, promoting, loving dedication in relation to Mahaprabhu Divine Kapil. Hmm. That was the Guru Maharaj's main contributions in the form of part part 
commentary in the form of Sanskrit verses, mm, very precise way, giving illuminations. So, with the very, with the loving memory, sweet memory of that book publications, the memory, devotional service memory of our, our beloved teacher, one of our beloved Siksha Guru Simad Bhakti Bhaiva Puri Goswami Maharaj, directly connected. <laughs> Mm. Yes, wrote such a beautiful, a nice introduction, the Lutkam introduction. So it also shows how sweetly they were related, how lovingly, okay, so nicely they were related, both the God brothers. I also heard in the beginning of Sri Chaitanya Shashat Mats, the then Glorious in Shingananda Brahmachari, also directly involved, that we took care of even some supervising services, supervision of building a new Chaitanya Sarasat Mat in the beginning period, mm -hmm. taking care. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Is to be, is to be guardian caretaker mm. on behalf of Sila Guru Maharaj, his mission. He used to be, he heard, often he used to be engaged in supervising development of that Chaitanya Sarasat Mahat at the beginning, supervising the construction of the compound world construction of these some buildings. So so sweet. As we as we came to know about it, came to know about all these histories of his so sweet involvement in Navadip Chaitanya Sarasatma and Guru Mahastai. We appreciated that so much. So sweet memories. Hmm. So then at some point, both the God brothers, I mean, mutually, in an affectionate mutual way, they decided to have their own independent missions. And that's how at some point, the then Nishimhananda Brahmachari Prabhuji letter, Srimad Bhakti Vaiva Puri Goswami Maharaj, then he uh, physically and externally came out and started his own mission to mutual understand. That's what we see in relation to other disciples of Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada also. After he departed, after he departed from this world, many of his stalwart disciples, all the stalwart God brothers, they just decided decided to start their independent missions, independent spiritual organizations, to be spreading, propagating the divine messages and precepts of their Gurudev, their Guru Mahasya, Sarsri Thakur Prabhupada, of Mahaprabhu, Radha Krishna, just more widely to an independent with with all their individual independent institutions. And not only Srimad Bhakti Bhaiva Puri Goswami Maharaj Ji, but also many other stalwart God brothers, the stalwart God brothers, stalwart disciples of Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, happily decided, okay, or needfully, out of necessity, the, some higher necessities of spreading, propagating Mahaprabhu consciousness, Radha Krishna consciousness more widely they decided to have their own independent organizations and that's how we find today Mahaprabhu's message, divine message of Mahaprabhu 
divine life and precept of Mahaprabhu, Srila Sarsri Thakur Prabhupada. Radha Krishna consciousness got so widespread, widely propagated also. Due to, due to, I mean, so due to one of the facts, reality is that all these stalwart disciples of Sarsri Thakur Prabhupada, they decided to have their own mission, own institution, and enthusiastically started preaching all with their specific enthusiasm interest. So that's how we find one Mahaprabhu Radha Krishna consciousness got widespread in India and then later on through Simad Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupadji Maharaj all over the world which was a very, very special desire of Srila Saraswati Goswami Thakur Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, that one day Mahaprabhu's okay, the life and precept of Simon Mahaprabhu, divine life and precepts of Simon Mahaprabhu, divine messages of Bhagavan Gaurhari, the Gaura consciousness, Radha Krishna consciousness will be widespread, will be propagated all over the world. You know, Prithivite Achi Jata Nagaraji Gram, Sarvatta Prachar Harive Mona. So it was a sweet desire, Thakur Bhakti Vinod, Sarsati Goswami Thakur Prabhupada, that Mahaprabhu's treasure be distributed, nectarine treasure, matchless nectarine treasure, Loving devotion to Radha Krishna be distributed all over the world. And that happened. God fulfilled mm. some beautiful, wonderful ways. Wonderful ways. It began with some of his disciples, stalwart disciples, Harshri Thakur in the beginning. Rugu Bhakti Sharanga Goswami Maharaj, Bhakti Pradeep Tirtha Maharaj, Bhakti Sharanga Goswami Maharaj, Bhakti Hridaya Ban Maharaj, and others began, but then later on, thereafter, through the Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ji Maharaj, then it, it got wonderfully propagated, more widely wonderfully. And we also find other stalwart God brothers, his God brothers like my Guru Mahasila Bhakti Rakshak Siddhar Dev Goswami Maharaj. Later, my Bhakti Vaiva Puri Goswami Maharaj. Also, they contributed to this world preaching. <laughs> so, my Bhakti, Bhakti Balla Tirtha Goswami Maharaj. They, they also took care of the later part preaching programs. Okay. Krishna Katha Pro, later part of the preaching of Krishna consciousness so nicely, so nicely, beautifully. And so, even after Srimad Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj also, it continued through some other stal stalwart Gauriya Vaishnava Acharyas, that propagation of Radha Krishna consciousness continued so nicely. Hmm. So, back to the point. So, both the loving God brothers, dear God brothers, they continue to be living in company of each other, living together for quite a long time in the beginning of Sri Chaitanya Sarasat Mad Navadip. That way lovingly sharing and caring for each other. So then, then at some point they nicely decided to have their own missions. That was fine. So, <clears throat> one of the memories, sweet memories, from, from the lifetime of Sri Guru Maharaj, Sri Bhakti Vaiva, Puri Goswami Maharaj, the then Nishimhananda Prabhu Brahmachari Prabhuji. Mm. 
So one of his sweet services, special services got recorded in the become recorded in the form of his prelude come introduction to Chaitan sorry to Sri Prapanna Jivana Amritam book. So there are there are many other sweet services, many other several other important sweet devotional services okay by him you know from him during that time but which could not be historically recorded as you know many many I mean, generally in general the pure devotees live their life in a simple way the principle of plain living but high thinking plain living but at the same time living with higher ideals very high ideals and principles that's what they did so guru masila siddhar dev goshay maharaj not bhakti boy hapuri goshay maharaj at that time so so all of them could not be recorded all of his sweet contribution in the field of devotional services while they are staying together in Navodhi, Chaitanya Sarasat Mat could not be recorded. Mm, but, I mean, written down and officially recorded like in history. But it has been recorded in our memory, hearing from Sila Guru Maharaj, from other older disciples, senior devotees of Chaitanya Sarasat Mat how Mad Bhakti Vaiva Puri Goswami Maharaj is then respected, well respected, Nishinghananda Das Brahmachari Mahasaya. Okay, he used to be taking care of some very important uh, devotional services in that time, at that time. Ultimately, ultimately he was engaged in and pure devotional activities to the Chaitanya Sahasatma deities and finally to the purpose, not just as one institution, the main essential purpose ultimately to be engaged in serving his Gurudev Sri Sarsri Thakur Prabhupada and Mahaprabhu Radha Krishna in the Holy Association Loving Companion the stalwart God brother, loving God brother, Srimad Bhakti Rakshak, Siddhar Goswami Maharaj. So ultimately, he was absorbed, engaged in the devotional service to divine Kapul and Mahaprabhu during that time. Like the way I mentioned, often he was, used to be engaged in supervising the de developing activities, the construction activities, and developmental, the then developmental work of uh, the construction of Chaitanya Sarasat Mahat alongside Sri Guru Maharaj, while also taking care of some publications, helping Sri Guru Maharaj in some publication department in that way. Hmm. One of the sweet memories. There are so many sweet memories then thereafter. Mm -hmm. I have got the memories, very sweet memories of playing with Guru Maharaj, <laughs> eating chana prasad. In the afternoon times, the Guru Maharaj used to be eating some very delicious chana, you know, card. Made cottage cheese made out of the pure cow's milk. You know, pure milk derived from the temple cows. Pure cow's milk, happy cow's milk. So then with the lemon, using the lemon juice made out of the lemons grown in the temple land. So very tasty. So I found out the 
this time in, you know, the four o'clock in the afternoon. As I found out it, I would be coming, running from my, if I would be there, my grandparents, you know, maternal grandparents' house. So I just learned to, to count the bits. There was one whole clock there, my maternal grandparents' house. So as soon as it would be beating, down, 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 four times. I also knew, I've learned to count the, you know, to understand the clock, the way clock works, timings. As soon as it did it, I remember four times I would be coming running. Small child, so a lot of energy, kids energy. I'll be going to Guru Mahaj running upstairs. And during that time Guru Mahaj would be eating Chana Prasad. So it's very tasty. With some little Indian molasses. Indian molasses made of sugar cane juice. So sometimes Guru Mahaj would be eating the chana with some pure sugar cane juice, with some pure mol- molasses we call gur or some brown sugar kind of, not polished white sugar, brown sugar, you know. So tasty. So the Guru Mahaj would be eating and I would be waiting to when I receive some prasad. Chana Prashad would be looking at me, looking at me, smiling and giving me. So as soon as he gave me, I immediately finished. Finished the Chana Prashad, waiting for the further <laughs> installment. And eventually, those devotees had to prepare, they made the amount of the Chana <laughs> three times more amount, knowing our own Bhagidhar shareholder now came big shareholder, okay, now came <clears throat> for whom Guru Mahaj feels some loving affection. So, so, not only Guru Mahaj is satisfied to be eating for himself, but he is also now adding to his satisfaction. Now another, you know, shareholder came for Chana Prasha. So they Immediately, as they saw me, every day, almost every day coming, and during the afternoon time, they made the amount of chana prasa three times more. Okay. Then no, you know, there's a lot of milk, cow's milk. No shortage of uh, cow's milk. Okay. At least five, five milk-giving cows are there. A lot of milk, so. No shortage of chana that way. So, still remember, so, Guru Mahaj was tasting chana and looking at me smilingly, understanding my impatient waiting to receive some prasad, happily giving me. Mm. And then, then, as soon as the, his disciples see the chana is finished, they, they would bring more, adding. So that no shortage for Guru Mahaj's own eating. That way. One of the childhood memories, eating, receiving Guru Mahaj's prasad. Many other me- memories, playing with Guru Maharaj while Guru Mahaj was coming down from his bhajan kuti, and, you know, going around the temple just to have some inspection, inspection how things are going on flowing around and I would be with Guru Maharaj. He, was, he, would, he used to be walking, walking and I would go round and round and round Guru Maharaj. Even while he was slow walking motion, that was one of my play. There. Okay, Guru Maharaj was walking straight, slowly, slow motion and I had a lot of kids energy. So I would be just going around Guru Maharaj in this way. Yes. And Guru Maharaj would be relishing that. Sometimes Guru Maharaj used to have big stick. 
you would be going around walking with a stick. Sometimes I would be holding that stick also in front of Guru Maharaj and going in the front. Kids play, you know, with sweet memories. I described. Sometimes some construction work was still going on in Chaitanya Shahashatmat. Some sands, there would be some, some stalks of sands here and there. Once it so happened, in, uh, in, in one part of Chaitanya Shahashatmat, due to some building work, some of the building materials were there. Also, a big pile of sands were uh, are kept there for construction work. And what happened to me, remembered, so as Guru Mahaj was passing by, walking by, some disciples were following. So, so Guru Mahaj was just walking, followed by, attended by some of his disciples in behind. So in a playful mood, I took a handful of sand and threw on Guru Mahaj. <laughs> Guru Mahaj would tell you, and looked at Guru Maharaj, looked up to him in a playful way. But he didn't seem to be disturbed. He just did like this. But the disciples following behind got very disturbed. <clears throat> disciples of Guru Maharaj following behind got very disturbed. They started showing me big eyes. No, you cannot do that. Okay. <clears throat> Cannot do that. What did you do that way? Some disciple came running to check me so that I don't do it again. So they, they had di disturbed us. About four years, kind of. Very little. <laughs> so between half, three and a half years, four, or maybe a little bit more than four years, four and a half could be. Hmm. So, but I can I can vividly remember from that time. I have good I have got good memory. So, some of the disciples came running forward to check me if I turned too far. There. But by that time, I became a little bit careful. Upon looking at the face of those disciples, looking at their reaction, they got so disturbed, angry type. I became a bit careful, but. I looked at Guru Maharaj, he was smiling, he was not feeling disturbed. So he was just smiling at me without, you know, without any feelings of disturbance, he was just fine, fine with me and smiling at me and just doing like this. Some of Guru Maharaj's disciples also started you know, cleaning Guru Maharaj Uttarya more nicely and I was looking at Guru Maharaj looking at his eyes, his face, and looking at this disciple's face, thinking, Guru Mahari, I used to call him Mahanaj. I could not pronounce raw yet, Mahanaj. So I was trying to tell them, Mahanaj is okay, fine. What's wrong with you all? <laughs> so, I was thinking, seeing, looking at Guru Mahari, thinking, Guru Mahari is fine. He's not disturbed. He's smiling at me. Why they are so disturbed and angry? What's wrong? What, what wrong did I do? I was playing with Guru Maharaj. He's fine, smiling at me. And these, and these guys in my, my mind, well, they so, feel so disturbed. Why? What's wrong with them? Guru Maharaj is fine. Something wrong with them. <laughs> kind of. Hmm. And as I grew older, I... I Understood, right? it was not okay, not okay mm, to, to, to throw sand on Guru Maharaj. Ah, better to throw flowers, that thing. Mm. But I remember, Guru Maharaj didn't chastise me at all. He was just taking a simple way, happy, nice way. Hmm. So I became a personal, a little personal attendant of Guru Mahaj from my very early age. 
noon, I remember, when I was five, six years of age. Mm. I used to be with Guru Maharaj upstairs as his personal attendant. Um, uh, the Guru Maharaj used to be sending me around. Come, go and look around and report back to me how things are going. Which way? And every day, every day service activities, you know, he wanted to know. Instead of he himself always going down and to give a round, he used to be sending me hmm, as his like, staff reporter. Okay, sending me, just go, go and quickly go around and look into everything, look, look at everything and give me report. Come back to me and report to me how things are going on, which way. You know, every day. Every day, Chaitanya Shahar activities he wanted to know about. How <clears throat> things are flowing, every day's service mm-hmm. is there. So, as soon as Guru Mahal would be asking me, would be asking me, go, look around, see everything and report back to me. I'll just go, go running, immediately, very enthused, so, to carry out the order of Guru Maharaj. It's run. And then I would come back to Guru Maharaj. Some positive reports and also a little bit negative reports. So then, because I found, <coughs> you know, since then, till that time, I was not doing it with any spying mentality, but I was just telling, coming back to Guru Maharaj and reporting everything truthfully, in a very truthful, realistic way. So, where some, I have, where I found some devotees, and Chaitanya Shah, some devotees in the mod, they are all engaged in their respective service duties. So I also report back to Guru, reported that, but while I was finding, some devotees are gossiping, okay, gossiping, they are resting, or not doing exact not a, a, directly engaged in the services, but they are talking with each other, gossiping, some of them taking little rest or sleeping kind of. So as I saw, the way I saw, I come, I, I would describe everything as it is to Guru Maharaj. Then what happened? Sometimes Guru Maharaj <laughs> called them up. Those who are kind of a bit neglectful, a uh, bit lazy, to do their service duties, <laughs> call them up. And without mentioning to them, though really mentioning to them about what they are doing, <clears throat> ask them, so what you are doing? The service engagements I gave you, the service engagements I gave you, uh, are they accomplished now? Went down. You know, they would be bending down their head before Guru Maharaj and feel very sigh and ashamed because they could not yet accomplish those <coughs> service duties given by Guru Maharaj. Say, sometimes, saying in a humble way, no Guru Maharaj, no Guru Maharaj, it, it, it is not yet accomplished. Going to be accomplished, don't you worry. Please don't worry. We're going to complete it soon. Yes. Why? Why it's not accomplished yet? What are you all doing? Some of them bending down head. <laughs> they could not speak lie to Guru. Guru Dev. <clears throat> My health is not so well. Taking little rest. Only resting or sometimes I am present there. Guru was asking them or uh, idling out the time becoming lazy. I knew you are gossiping. What kind of gossiping you are doing? Were you chanting holy names or discussing some Krishna Katha or gossiping? And the eyes got bigger. How Guru Maharaj came to know all this? You know, they had to speak truth. Don't do it again. Okay, go back to your service. Don't be lazy. Don't be idling away the time. There are more, more important services. 
I don't want to see you all be getting lazy and engaged in gossiping. Go back. Then they went back, but they were thinking how such reports came to Guru Maharaj. Then they figured out, at <clears throat> some point they figured out, oh, now they had, there has been a personal attendant of Guru Maharaj, now sent by Guru Maharaj like spy, big spy. And whatever he's seeing, okay, just reporting, so they, they could figure out that I was that reporter. Okay. And they understood that I had no negative feelings. I, I didn't have any <clears throat> plan, negative ways to report bad things, any negative things to Guru. I was just I was being just very honest and truthful. Whatever way I saw, I just reported back to Guru Mahaj. That's the way Guru Mahaj ordered me. So they are not they are not really disturbed with me. But thereafter what happened, as soon as next time Guru Mahaj would be sending me to go around, to look around, reporting back. As soon as they saw me, those devotees saw me, I coming from from a distance, I am coming, they all would become very careful. They all became very, very careful. Even if they were not engaged in service at that time, taking a little bit, you know, a bit lazy or something, but as soon as they saw me, they were very careful. Swami, I am coming. This boy is coming from far. They became very careful. So that when I looked at them, saw them, I could see them, oh, they are all nicely engaged in service, respective services, and good report about all of them goes to Guru, their Gurudev. Hmm. Sometimes I could also figure out from far, as they were looking at me, I could also look at them. <laughs> could look at them, that they were being very careful. I could sense it, because even our children are very receptive. The children of the five years, six years, they are very deceptive. They can understand the mood and other feelings. So I could also understand <clears throat> they are being, now they became very careful about me. <laughs> and in that age, I could understand, I could differentiate between um, good report, positive report, and negative report. So I, I could also understand, oh, I did not know Guru Mahaj would be calling them up, calling for them. So they are now a bit afraid, okay, and being careful about me. So I also thought of, okay, let me give a good report to Guru Maharaj. Although from the from the uh, from a distant position, I could see they are being immediately careful upon seeing me coming. I could tell Guru Maharaj that, oh, seeing me coming from a distance, so now they became so careful. Now they are again engaged in the service, but I also became a bit kind, nice and kind with them. And I'm thinking, I could differentiate, and that I could differentiate between good report, little bad report. So, <clears throat> so then because they were, very, they were being very careful, they were already engaged in their respect, full service when I came, came nearby, and some of them were looking at me and telling me, oh, Gurudev sent you? We know that. Sent you? They're smiling at me. I said, yes. So Guru Mahaj ordered me to look around. I was just saying in an honest way to everybody, to look around how things are happening, what you are all doing. And Guru Mahaj asked me to report back. That's why I'm here. Honestly. They appreciate it. So in that way, but then, <clears throat> after going back to Guru Maharaj, coming back, I gave all good reports about all of them also, who have been extra careful about me. Although I saw from a distance, oh, they are not doing their job by catching, okay, catching my sight from little distance, then they are being very careful. I did not say that. That part to Guru Maharaj, I still remember. I kept it more hidden, thinking... Fearing if Guru Mahaj again calls them up, <laughs> chastising, then they will think, oh, they are getting chastised, getting caught because of me. Mm. Nice memories. Mm.
sometimes. There are many, many sweet memories. And the Guru Maharaj had a chair, you know, revolving chair. The chair was presented to Guru Maharaj by one of his dear most god brothers, Bhakti Sharunga Goswami Maharaj, Simad Bhakti Sharunga Goswami Maharaj. It was the chair which was presented to him by one of his servitors, disciples, one of his devotees. And then at some point, he lovingly presented that revolving chair to Guru Maharaj. So Guru Maharaj used to be sitting on the revolving chair often. So happened at some point, when I went up to see Guru Maharaj, the Guru Maharaj sometimes would be, would be making me sit on that revolving chair, start revolving me round and teach me different directions. East, East, West, North, South, Urdha, Adha, upper direction, then the downward, and also he'll be teaching me the corner of or the corner in between the main four four directions, east, west, north, south, you know, Nairita Kon, Bayu Kon, Ishan Kon, Agni Kon, all this. As he was revolving me. So then after after a while, when I would come down from the revolving chair, then it was my turn to revolve Guru Maharaj. So I would be requesting Guru Maharaj in my child's language, requesting him to be sitting there. Uh, thinking it was my turn. Now Guru Maharaj revolved me a bit, making me sit on that chair, in his own chair. Now it was my turn. Mm. So my turn, so I was I would be insisting, I remember. I would be insisting Guru Maharaj, mm, insisting him to be sitting on that chair. Now I would I I started revolving him, but I had not so much strength. I was little and he was heavy figure, sitting on the chair, revolving chair. And now I, I was revolving, trying to revolve him in a similar way, the way Guru Maharaj was just revolving me. And upon seeing me, I didn't have enough physical ability to revolve him. He would be helping me by his own feet so that I could revolve him nicely and feel happy about looking at me happily. So now it was complete. Guru Maharaj made me sit on the chair and revolve me around. Now I also made him sit on the same chair in my turn and I revolved him. <laughs> Playful way. Sometimes I remember Guru Maharaj used to be teaching me in the night sky even in cloudless night sky of Navuddhivadham, teaching me different constellations, constellations, different Rashi we call, Konna Rashi, I think in Virgum, Konna Rashi, Mesho Rashi, Mithun, Karkot, Shingho Rashi, all this, Dhanu Rashi, all these different constellations in the cloudless night sky, trying to teach me. Mm. He used to wake me up. It was in juvenile age. I used to be sleeping. I used to be sleeping in Guru Maharaj's own room as his, as his personal attendant, personal caretaker. I used to be sleeping in every day in Guru Maharaj's own room, night time. So I used to be a sleep lover. So I could not. <laughs> I, I could not always get up in dawn during the Mongolarati time. Ah, I loved sleeping so much and Guru Maharaj used to wake me up. In the early, he, he, he used to get up. He would simply get up, wake up early in the morning. So, of course, during the night time, when he needed some glass of water or attending him, he would call me, I would get up from my sleep and help him. He was in old age, in the night time. Then again, coming back to sleep. 
in dawn, in dawn during Mongol at the time, he used to be calling me, waking me up. Nimai Otto, Koto Gumobi, you have slept enough now, wake up Otto. So, <clears throat> few times he, few times he would be calling me. One time calling would not be enough for me, still I was so, so attached to sleeping. Okay. Two times, three times, then I would be more careful. By the time he called me three times, I would be careful, get up, washing my hands and face, and he would want me to come back. He would want me to either attend Mongol Aruti. It was all during my juvenile time, when you, juvenile lifetime, studying in the, the high, secondary, high secondary and then college life, more high secondary level, 10th standard between 10th standard and 11th, 12th standard. So, he would want me to attend Mongol Aruti immediately after washing my hands and face or if the Mongol Aruti would be finished by then, he would want me to come back. Okay, sitting on my, in the winter season, if it was winter season, winter time, sitting on my bed comfortably and then reading Srimad Bhagavad Gita, reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita out loud. Hmm. Guru Mahaj wanted to hear the recita recitation, recitation of Srimad Bhagavad Gita out loud. So thereby he was fulfilling both purposes, educating me with the with different verses of Bhagavad Gita, making me read it, study it. At the same time, he was also releasing them. And Guru Mahaj practically got the whole Bhagavad Gita by heart. So, in his youthful, from his youthful days, he realistically, practically got the whole Bhagavad Gita by heart. So he knew, he had already knew all the verses. But still he wanted to hear from me, wanted to make me read out loud, recite out loud, <clears throat> and hearing them again and releasing it. And he would be correcting me. If I would be chanting, if, if I would be reciting or chanting any of the verses of Bhagavad Gita, in correct way, as regard, with regard to pronunciation, in other words, in connection with the art of pronunciation, Sanskrit pronunciation, and all, <clears throat> he would be immediately correcting me, kindly, affectionately correcting me. And then, place to place, in, in connection with certain specific verses of Bhagavad Gita, he would be giving some commentary also. He would be be throwing more light, he was giving me some illuminations about <clears throat> certain deeper meanings of certain verses of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. I was reading them in Bengali, reading the, the, reading the verses of Bhagavad Gita in Sanskrit, then reading out also Bengali translations. Then in place to place, in regard to certain specific Verses of Bhagavad Gita, the Guru Mahaj would be would be giving some commentary, explaining to me some certain purports, certain aspects of the purports of those verses, meanings. Apart from sometimes aligned with, sometimes in, <clears throat> I mean, totally aligned with what Bengali translation given. And some other times, something which is not mentioned, clearly mentioned in the Bengali translations of Bhagavad Gita verses, from his own realization, something new, explaining to me. I will be very listening. I, I have always been a good listener. I have always been a good listener, so I would be listening to Guru Mahal. So thus he kindly educated me with many of the holy scriptures under his 
under his direct, kindly, merciful, affectionate guidance. So, for certain seasons, I would be, I'd be reading Smad Bhagavad Gita out loud for months, every day, here at the dawn time. The Guru Mahaj would be listening repeatedly, same Bhagavad Gita, once I have completed every day one chapter, once I completed Bhagavad Gita again coming back. He was releasing and re-releasing. Also his other purpose I could realize to educate me, to ingrain Srimad Bhagavad Gita verses and meanings also in my consciousness by repetition, repeated by making me, putting me, making me to study, okay, study in a repeated way. But it educate me nicely. Then thereafter, other seasons, he is to engage me. He engaged me in reading from Simad Bhagavatam, especially Dasamashkanda, 10th canto. First canto, the Siddhanti, which is so describing the, all the great Siddhantic aspects, Simad Bhagavatam, and also 10th canto, specific. Also, sometimes some other cantos, but first canto and tenth canto, specific. He would be kindly engaging me to re read out loud to him. Some other time, so Simad Bhagavad Gita, Simad Bhagavatam, sometimes Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, but other times Mahabharata also. Mahabharata done by Kali Prasanna Singha. Okay. Okay. Put me, engage me in reading out loud Mahabharata, also Balmiki Ramayanam. Mm. So, sometimes Sila Guru Maharaj, Govinda Maharaj, myself would be playfully engaged in Antakshari, Antakshari competition. Antakshari competition means it would be mostly taking place during the afternoon time. Srila Guru Maharaj, Govinda Goswami Maharaj, myself mostly, three of us. Srila Guru Maharaj would be starting. Guru Maharaj <coughs> used to be starting chanting one verse from the Holy Scripture. And then by the end, following the very end of that verse, the end letter of the verse, then the next one, the next turn, either to Govinda Maharaj, to myself, have to speak another verse, have to utter, chant another verse from Holy Scripture. And by the end, by, okay, yes, what Govinda Maharaj spoke, okay, some, the, 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 the letter with which the, that verse ended, then I would start. I'll Ten start years. a verse. In this way, go on circular way. Sometimes you Guru Maharaj, myself, Govinda Maharaj. In this way. Again, Guru Maharaj, myself, Govinda Maharaj. Sometimes Guru Maharaj, Govinda Maharaj, myself. Then Guru Maharaj start. Go on in triangular way. It's to be going on for hours. Yes. Although Sila Guru Maharaj had the best talk, the best talk of all the verses of Holy Scripture, so often we would be defeated. At the end, at the end, we would simply be defeated by Guru Maharaj. Okay, myself and Govinda Maharaj. So, then we felt the great need to increasing more stock, <laughs> stock of, you know, verses. <clears throat> because at some point, uh, Guru Maharaj ended, uh, where Guru Mahal used to be ending with a particular verse, chanting, then our stock already gone, gone out, we are gone out of this stock. We could not utter any more verse. Then Guru Mahal would be making up. He, he would be again chanting another verse with the ending letter, this verse, in this way. So once Guru Mahal mentioned to me, I would be very happy the most happy one day when you can defeat me. <laughs> I'll be very happy to see that time. Hmm. And that moment will come 
Oh, that you are being able to defeat me. I said, Guru Maharaj, it will never happen. <laughs> if, you, if you purposefully don't make it happen, it will never happen. No matter how much stock, <clears throat> no matter how many you know, verses I memorize, if I get by heart, I can never defeat you. He used to smile, laughing. And I will say, I will be very happy. See, one day you can really defeat me in this competition. See, saying, Sarvatra, again, chanting one verse from certain scriptures, saying, Sarvatra Jayamit Cheta Putrat Shishat Parajayet. Mm. There is a saying from one of the verses, the scripture, quoting, quoting one of the verses from scriptures, he said that, which meant that person say that mm. for the guru figure, for the great father figure, or for the, in other words, for the father or mother or for great guru, they should not be, they should be desiring for winning everywhere, every place is except for their children and disciples. Hmm. The verse says in a cute way, father, mother, guru should be desiring for their winning, Okay, for their victory everywhere, except for their loving children and disciples. The Guru Mahal used to be quoting, quoting that, <coughs> saying, see, a Guru Dev is also supposed to be defeated by disciple. So that, that becomes the real winning on the part of Guru when getting, getting won by, conquered by uh, disciple. Defeated. So it is, see, this, this verse from the scripture say that, that being defeated by a loving disciple is a great honor, victory for the Guru. Mm. Being defeated by, or being conquered by the loving children is known to be great victory for the loving parents. Okay. Because their victory means parents' victory. Disciples' victory means Guru's victory. After all, he is Guru. In that way, smilingly, explaining to me, dear way, dear way. <clears throat> but we could never defeat Guru Maharaj in that competition, cyclic competition of, you know, chanting the verses, new and new, fresh verses, ending, starting with the end letter. Of the, ver of the verse, particular verse chanted by Guru Maharaj. Hmm. How many sweet memories like this lined up? I think the daughter getting tired. Feeling bit tired. Right? When you were, uh, were showing to the stars, and he told there are some stars so far. Light didn't come, then he asked you, you know who created this? Exactly. That, that, uh, yes, so he remembers, because once I also described to him, he remembers all points so clearly. Yes, some point Guru Maharaj also, <clears throat> you know, asked me. <clears throat> he, he asked me about the presiding temple deities, his own presiding temple deities. So, asked me about, do you know that deity? Do you know who is he with one, one hand upward? So, I thought in the beginning, I saw Mahaprabhu as Krishna, because I was just beginning to understand. Mm. And I called Krishna as Mahaprabhu to Guru Mahal. Guru Mahal said, no, one is with the one arm upward in the sky is called Mahaprabhu he is Mahaprabhu Gaurahari. Okay. And in the middle with the flute, Krishna. And on his left, 
Nuvati Radha Rani. So, he said Simati Radha Rani or Radha Rani. So, do you know? So, at some point, Gumari asked me, Do you know who is standing in the middle between Mahaprabhu and Radha Rani? I said, No. He is Krishna. You know? So while he was showing me the stars and other planets in the cloudless sky, see, this is called big universe, Brahmando, Vishra Brahmand. And you know who is just he said either sitting or standing, sitting or standing in between the two deities, holding flute. Krishna. He is the he is the owner of this whole universe. Pointing out towards the stars and you know, planetary systems, galaxies in the cloudless sky, while he was teaching me some, some of the constellations. How do you call constellations? Okay, once he remarked, once or twice, he reminded me, you know, who is standing, the, the, the deity, beautiful deity holding the float, standing in between Krishna, he is the actual owner, owner of this whole universe, the stars, moon, what you are seeing, so, so many planets in the sky, including this art. He is the owner of this Vishwa Brahmanda. In, in Bengali he said, he is the Malik, he is the Malik of Vishwa Brahmanda. I am translating in English. No, and he is standing in between, Krishna holding the flute. He is the Malik of all Vishwa Brahmanda you are. You know, Jeta, Akashe Ja Dekcho, Jato Samasto Tara, Graho Nakhatra, he got a Vishwa Brahmanda Malik Tini. Standing in the temple holding flute. From that time onward, I thought, oh, the, the, the very owner of whole universe you now standing in the temple, deity form, I became very, very full of reverence, awe oh, and reverence, great. I remember after thereafter, I became so filled with great respect, special respect, awe oh, and reverence to Krishna. Okay. Guru Mahal said, whenever you go down, go to see the temple deities, so with full respect you must pay prostrated pranam. You must pay respectful pranam. So it may not, might not have mentioned sastanga or panchanga, or could have, I don't exactly remember, but you pay full respect, full respect, said that. Hmm. Jakon to me Mondire Shamne Jabe, Mondire Shamne Bigroke Darshan Korbe, Avatomar Puro Dandabad, Purna Dandabad Pranam. Devi, I think it says Shastanga Pranam. Shastanga Dandabad Pranam Korbe. So from the time I heard from Guru Maharaj, the very Malik. Owner of whole Vishwa Brahmanda is standing in the temple. Whenever I went to see those deities, being, I would be very specially respectful, in reference towards Krishna specifically. And then also very much respectful in, to Srimati, Srimati Radharani in relation to Krishna and also to Mahaprabhu in both in relation to Krishna, both deities. But Lord Krishna became center of my attraction. Vishwa Brahmanda Malik, after all, he is the Malik, owner of whole universe. Whole universe. Guru Maharaj put it in my head. Hmm. That way. Then later on he explained to me, Mahaprabhu is the combination of you know, Krishna and Radharani. Mahaprabhu is also very great. Have, have great respect for Mahaprabhu, Gaur Gaur you know, his combination of Radha Krishna. This part I did not tell you. And Radha, combination of Radha Krishna. And on the left of Krishna, Radharani, oh, so dear to Krishna. 
so very dear to Krishna. Hmm. In Bengali it says, Krishna is our supreme goddess and Radharani, sorry, Krishna is our supreme god and Radharani supreme goddess. Hmm. Both are god and goddess in Bengali. So Krishna is our Bhagavan. I have understood what is Bhagavan, who is Bhagavan by that time. I could understand who is real Bhagavan. Now Krishna is Bhagavan. I mean, sorry. Krishna Holland Bhagavan and Radharani Bhagavati, meaning Krishna is Supreme God, Radharani is Supreme Goddess. And Mahaprabhu Gosundar, you see, combination of both. And I was, Guru Maharaj was explaining all those to me. He was so happily explaining talking with me and I was also so happily relating to them, relishing, relishing Guru Mahaj's way of explanation. I still remember Guru Mahaj specifically meant to me explain. You know, who is, I just sitting, who is sitting in that throne in the middle or standing in the middle holding the float? He is the Malik of Bishop Brahmanda owner of this whole universe, what you are seeing in the sky, all stars, moon, planets. Okay. Okay, that's all for today. Hmm. I can be going on for hours. Hmm. So many sweet memories in relation to the Guru Maharaj and Srila Swami Prabhupada Ji Maharaj. I have had, you know, I have had the immense fortune to be having the darshan of both of them together. Also, Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Daita Madhav Goswami Maharaj, Guru Maharaj, other stalwart God brothers, and with Srila Swami Prabhupada Ji Maharaj, more than six to seven times. And more than six times at least, seeing them having darshan of both of them together in Navadvip Mat, once in Mayapur Chandra Temple, during the inauguration, during the very inauguration occasion of Mayapur Chandra Temple. I also went there, I also went there together, accompanying Sila Guru Maharaj as his one of his personal attendants there hmm. during that occasion, inauguration. And it was then, it was that most rare historical moment when both the exalted God brothers shared their Vyasasana together. Remember? Swami Maharaj, Swami Prabhupada Ji Maharaj. Siddhar Goswami Maharaj sharing, sitting on the same Vyasasana, sharing. It was then. I was also present there, very young. Hmm. Other times I saw, I saw both of them, both the, both the exalted Acharyas together in Chaitanya Sarasatma. Another world of sweet memories. All right, so. Thank you for inspiring me, engaging me in this service. Mm.